In this video, I'm gonna talk you through what's in my landscape photography bag for 2022. Now it's about two years since I last did one of these videos. And I think it's fair to say that my gear has radically shifted in that time frame. So I'm hoping that this video will be mildly interesting for some of you. Now I'm not gonna waste any more time because we've got a lot to fit in and I don't want this video to drag into some sort of 50 minute epic. So let's get straight to it. I'm gonna start with my tripods. Now I've had an awful lot of people ask me whether I have ditched my geared head. And I can emphatically say, no, I have not. It is still my main tripod head. And this is the Benro GD3 WH geared, geared head. And it is brilliant. I couldn't recommend it more highly. I think it's been transformative for my landscape photography. And I would never ever go back to a standard ball head as my main tripod head. And I've paired it with the Benro Mac Free TMA 38CL. This is my main tripod. It's a bit of a tank, it's quite heavy, but it's incredibly robust, incredibly strong, and incredibly sturdy. Second, we'll go to my sort of I'll put it, say it's the, the reserve tripod. It sits on the bench most of the time. Um, and generally I'll only use this when I'm looking to travel a little bit lighter because it's probably about 300 grams lighter than that main tripod. And this is the Mi Photo Globe Trotter. Um, this is kind of a relic from another time um, that's been left over. I've had this about three or four years now and it doesn't get that much use. But you know, it's it's not bad. It's really not bad. It's I think it's quite a good light travel tripod, to be honest. More interesting that than that is the head that I've got on the top of it. And this is what I would affectionately call my Frankenstein head. And uh, I've kind of cobbled this together recently and the jury is still out on how good it's gonna be ultimately. So the bottom of it is a, a newer or newer, I never know how to pronounce it, leveling base. Um, I bought this second hand for about 20 quid. I don't think it's particularly great. I think if you spend more money on leveling bases, you'll get better gear. But, um, you know, I think it, it's fine. So here at the bottom, we have got a 360 panoramic uh, tripod uh, head, and that's from Cool Hyoda. I've uh, probably butchered the actual uh, pronunciation of that. And this is the Pan 60. And I think this thing is fantastic um, because it's got a little um, sort of wheel on the side here where you can dial in increments of degrees from 15 degrees through to 90 degrees. And what that does is as you're panning round, the tripod head will click as it goes into each of those degree uh, sort of indents. And that essentially allows you to pan um, without even looking. So it's particularly good if you're shooting panoramics at night or you're in a hurry. And then on top of that, I've got a Desmond DMH1, which is actually just a tilt head. And I think it's actually designed for monopods, but in combination with this panoramic base and the leveling base, I think this could be quite a compelling panoramic powerhouse. And then my third tripod is actually shooting me right now and that is the Benro Slim Carbon Fiber and I basically only use this for video work and for that it excels but I think for actual photography it's a bit too puny <laughs> um, you couldn't really take it out in any serious weather because it you know it's going to be shaken all over the place but you know if you're looking for a lightweight tripod for video highly highly recommended right let's actually get into the bag next Right, let's start with the cameras. And I've got two cameras. So the first here is the Nikon Z7, the original that came out in 2018. And um, I absolutely love it. This camera came in for a lot of stick when it was originally released, but I think a lot of it was unfair. Um, and particularly with the firmware updates that they've brought out in the, you know, the, the, the years since it was released, I think it's a very, very capable camera now, particularly for landscape photography. It just produces absolutely beautiful images and I really couldn't recommend it more highly. I don't see any reason at this moment in time for me to upgrade to the, the Z7 Mark II. 
um, because this really gives me pretty much everything I need already. So yeah, really highly recommended. My second camera is filming me right now, and that is actually the Nikon Z6 original Mark I, which also came out in 2018 at the same time as this. And uh, that's a beautiful camera. I primarily use it as my video camera. I also use the Z6 for astrophotography, um, and I think it really excels at that. And you can pick up the Z6 uh, Mark I secondhand for really, really competitive prices. So if you're looking to get into the Z mount, honestly, both of these cameras, very, very compelling offerings at the moment. Um, in terms of lenses, on this, on the Z7 here, I have got the 14 to 30 f4s, the wide angle beast, and I adore this lens. It is superb. It is sharp, it's compact, and it's lightweight. And um, yeah, I really can't say anything bad about it. I really can't. And I don't see any reason to upgrade to the, um, the 14 to 24 f2.8. It's bigger, it's bulkier, it's pricier, and the, the filter options for it are just extortionate. I really, really don't see the point for, you know, what, moderate improvements in corner sharpness. I think this lens is outstanding. Um, my next lens, now this one's an interesting one because I, I've only had this for about two weeks so far, so I can't say too much about it because I'm still forming my opinions on it. But this is the Nikon 24 to 120 f4s line, which they've only recently brought out. Um, first impressions are, I think it's very, very good. Um, but I'm not going to say any more on it yet because I'm going to do a dedicated video on this lens probably in the next week or two. Now, another lens we've got here. This is the Nikon 35mm 1.8 S-Line. And this serves multiple functions in my setup. Uh, A, it's my main uh, video lens. So probably about 80% of the video footage that you see on this channel is shot with this lens. And it does a very, very good job. Also, I use it for astrophotography. And I recently did a video on why I recommend this for astro. I'll link at the top for that because I'm not going to sort of repeat myself. But honestly, it's a very underrated lens, this. I absolutely adore it um, the other lens I've got is the 50 millimeter 1.8 s from Nikon which is filming me right now um, this is probably the least used lens in my setup probably um, but honestly it is outstanding I think in pure optical performance is the best lens I've ever used honestly it is so good I can't say anything bad about it at the moment, I kind of use it for some video work, as you can see here, and I also use it for some astrophotography. Um, really, really <laughs> out of this world lens. And that's it for the lenses. You may actually notice I don't have a telephoto lens at the moment. Um, my plan is to get the Nikon 100 to 400 lens that they've just brought out for the Z mount, but that thing, I'm going to need to remortgage my house to get that. So. I don't think I'm going to be getting it anytime soon. It's probably going to be some time off. So um, for now, I'm just going to stick with basically the 14 to 30 and the 24 to 120. And I'm hoping that will cover the majority of my needs. Now, you may have also noticed on the front of both of my lenses here, I have actually got um, a filter holder. So this is the Case Magnetic um, Circular Filters. And I've on both lenses, I've got them at 95 millimeters, so I only have one set of uh, filters. I've chosen 95 millimeters because that avoids vignetting at uh, focal lengths beyond 16 millimeters, particularly on that wide angle. Um, so that would be my recommendation if you're using that lens. And I think this system works brilliant, brilliantly. I basically leave the filter holder on the front, and then I've got these magnetic lens caps and I just transport them everywhere with that. And if I want to stick a filter on, I literally just pop it on the front. It works so, so well. Um, these are the filters themselves from Case. They're in this sexy little pouch, which is actually got tooth marks on from my cat because it was dragging it around the house like a bit of prey. Very, very random. Um, in here, I've got four filters. 
I've got the 10 stop, the 6 stop, the 3 stop and the circular polarizer. I think there is no better filter kit out there available at the moment in my opinion. I've got absolutely no reason to look at any other kit. This is just superb. Um, I've also got this um, Hoyer uh, R72 infrared filter. And uh, I think it's fair to say I don't use this one anywhere near as much as I should. At the moment, this is the kind of filter that I sort of roll out during those horrible summer months when the light is very harsh and you don't feel very inspired. Um, I think it's a very affordable way for dabbling in infrared photography, but if you're serious about infrared, you're probably better converting your camera. But um, yeah, if you want to dabble in it, highly recommended. Um, there's no filter in this little case, but this is a Gobi um, vari variable ND filter. That's basically on the 50 mil at the moment. Uh, very good for video work when you're shooting in bright light and you want to give that shallow depth of field effect. Intervalometer. Um, this is from a company called Roly. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think I'm butchering all those pronunciations. I got this fairly cheap. I think it was 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that. And basically the reason I've got this is on the Z7 um, Mark One and the Z6 Mark One, you cannot go beyond uh, 60, not 60, 30 seconds without going into bulb and time modes. Um, whereas on the Mark II, you can dial in one minute, two minute, three minute, etc. cetera. Um, this allows me to easily control those longer exposures. What else have we got in here? Um, microfiber lens cloths pretty boring not gonna say any more about that we have also got lens blower again pretty dull but pretty essential particularly on these mirrorless cameras they pick up quite a lot of dust so this is an effective way to de-dust what else we have got a head torch here this is from a company called alien scout I've had this for about three years now and I think it's fantastic. It's um, It's got variable strengths of light and it's also got a red light setting which is particularly useful for astrophotography. So next we've got a lens warmer. So I tend to use this for astrophotography so if I'm, if I'm out shooting with my 35 or my 50 mil lenses for any prolonged period of time dew can become a problem forming on the front of the glass. This is just a very effective way of combating that and you basically just wrap it around your lens plugged into a little power bank here next i've got this uh, cheap little uh, case here cost me about 10 pounds and honestly this one has got tooth marks in as well from my cat absolutely ridiculous um, in here i've got all sorts of little trinkets uh, shower caps uh, cheap solution for keeping water off your camera if it's raining don't bother spending your money on all those fancy solutions for that they're a waste of time in my experience uh, spare batteries spare memory card um, i've got another uh, cable release here for the camera um, a ventolin uh, inhaler i'm asthmatic so uh, you know i never go anywhere without that some uh, optical lens cleaner and another spare memory card and that's about it in here the other thing that i haven't touched upon is um for my video work because i'm using 35 mil and 50 mil focal lengths it means that i have to sit further off away from the camera so at the moment i'm probably about two and a half meters away from my camera and that means that the onboard microphone cannot pick up the audio very well so i use a zoom uh, H1N I think little uh, pocket recorder and I think it's a brilliant bit of kit it really does it just records the audio to micro SD cards and I've also paired that with a Rode lav mic which you can see just here so I just plug it into the um, zoom recorder and then I can just synchronize the video footage with the actual audio recording and it provides far, far better audio results out in the field, particularly when shooting at this sort of distance. In terms of the onboard audio, I use a Rode Video Micro. Have I got anything else in here? I don't know if I have, oh, 
This is like a, a rain cover for my bag that doesn't fit very well. So um, I'm probably gonna get the official one for this bag, I think at some point, because this is just a bit of a joke. I've also got a, a lovely Isle of Man themed uh, neck buff. Um, if I'm feeling cold, I can just throw that on. Um, and you also notice I, I never go anywhere without my hat as well. So that's often in here as well. Um, I think that's it for this bag. So I'll talk about the bag itself finally. So this is the Shimoda Explore 60, I think. And I don't know whether they still produce this because I think they've moved on to another range of bags. But um, I, I'll be upfront, I don't get very excited about bags. <laughs> I find them really dull. Hence why I never do videos on bags. That being said, this bag is quite good and I've had it now for about two years and that's quite long. That's probably the longest I've ever had a photography bag. So that tells the whole story really. I see no reason to, to switch because this thing's fantastic. It's very, very robust and, um, you know, I don't treat my bags with very much respect at all. And this one is showing absolutely no signs whatsoever of letting me down. It's covered in stains, it's covered in scuffs and scratches, but it's incredibly robust and incredibly strong. And that's really all I can ask for in a bag. And uh, very comfortable. Probably my biggest criticism of it is it squeaks a lot when you're carrying it. It's got very annoying squeak noise. But uh, yeah, that's about it really. Nothing else to say. And I think that is all my gear. You'll notice that I don't really have that much gear. I, um, I've purged myself of all my excess gear in, uh, in the last sort of year or two, because I've just realized you just, you don't, you don't need that much. You really don't. So I hope you found this little insight into my camera bag useful. And um, yeah, hopefully I won't need to film one of these again, um, maybe two years time, hopefully longer, because I'm hoping that this stuff will, uh, will stand the test of time if my cat doesn't stop dragging it around the kitchen. Bloody hell. See you all soon. Take care.